again everyone, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. My name is Mars, and today we're going to be doing the complete guide for Cerse. And this has been highly, highly requested, so hopefully this can help you figure out, you know, what, what the new changes are with Cerse and how you can make use of her. Now, Cerse has undergone some really dramatic overhauls, and uh, this this guide should be a little bit more oriented towards how to actually use her in battle. Fortunately, mages are pretty simple to gear, so we don't have to go too far into particulars on that. Uh, so today's focus is mostly going to be on her abilities. So the big change with Cerse is that pretty much all of her elemental abilities are good now, and all of them have new chaining families. Pretty much all of them do. I don't. I don't think any of them have any of their original chaining frames. They've they've made Cerse into an absolute monster. Uh, she's better than any mage currently in global, and is better than some of the mages that haven't come out yet. If they stay the same as they are in the Japanese version of the game, so units like X Death or Soul. Cerse is actually better than them currently. At least Soul, maybe not X Death. But anyways, the point is, she's amazing, amazing right now. Now, before getting into her abilities, uh, we do want to highlight her changes to her Trustmaster reward and her Super TMR. Her Trustmaster reward was made ridiculous. It used to only be 45 flat magic, and I think the 20% MP and Fervor were there before, and Fervor is just uh, some high tide. But what they added was 30% magic, which is kind of crazy for a TMR. This TMR is amazing. If you pull Cerse, you're going to want this TMR for your mages, unless you have... Uh, like, I can't really think of anything that I would replace this with. You you might use Freyavia's STMR or Malfazi's STMR instead, but this is like one of the best mage items in the game now. Now, speaking of some of the best mage items, the Sybil Crescent, her STMR also got some buffs. It's amazing. I think the 20% MP was the only thing it had before, in addition to the high stats, but now it also has Spiritual Flux, which uh, does auto limit and gives resistance to some elements by 10%. So that's pretty freaking awesome. And then I'm pretty sure this 20% magic is new as well. I don't believe that was there before. So. All of that together makes her stats much better than they were before, in addition to some updated passives. Uh, but the big thing we want to talk about is all of her new abilities and how you can kind of use them together. So the first two that I want to talk about are Blazing Omen and Freezing Omen. And actually, before we dive into that, I want to talk about how right now all of these abilities that she has, the fire, ice, wind, water ones, those are all single target, uh, as well as the earth one. Those are all single target. Now, they become AoE abilities as soon as you unlock it with... Ouroboros, or her Limit Burst, or Condemn. So if you use any of those three abilities, it will unlock the upgraded version of those abilities that do more damage and they hit all enemies. So you do want to have as best uptime as possible on those abilities. So a good way to open up a fight is to use Death Omen. Now Death Omen has been overhauled. It is much better than it used to be. Death Omen completely fills her limit burst and it increases her magic by 200% for 10 turns and it can't be dispelled. So this is a really great way to open up. So a lot of times I'll use Death Omen and then I'll use one of the abilities featured here. And you want to pick whichever one your boss is, the, that you're fighting is weak to. So we'll go ahead and use Fire in this case. So we'll go ahead and use Death Omen and we'll use Blazing Omen because we want to do fire damage. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now the thing that a lot of people are, were kind of surprised by, and let me chain this up real quick. Neat. So the thing that kind of surprised people a little bit is that her skills actually imbue her with an element, which is kind of strange for a mage, because most of the time you're like, well, why the heck would you want a mage to have an element imbued? Because most of the time their spells and stuff don't actually take on the weapon element that they have equipped. But Cerse is unique in that she has two abilities that use her elemental uh, equips. Uh, Premonition, her limit burst, is one of them, and then the other one is Ouroboros, which is a powerful move that we'll get to in a second. So that's why you want to open with whichever of these abilities the boss is weak to, because then it imbues her with it. And then you can use her LB to take advantage of element chains, and also because you're going to imperil as part of this LB. And I 
definitely recommend investing in this LB if you're going to use Circe a lot, because it imbues her, or sorry, it imperils her preferred elements by 100%, that's fire, ice, water, wind, and earth for four turns to all enemies, and it also imperils light, lightning, and dark, which are her non-preferred ones, by 60%. Uh, if you don't have it leveled, it only does 60% for all, so I definitely recommend leveling it, at least on your personal search, if you do plan on using her quite a bit. So we'll go ahead and pop those off, and it will give us quad cast, and you'll see it does element chains because uh, we have the fire imbued on us. Now you'll notice if you've used Surce before, one of the important changes is that it now chains very, very well. And uh, one other thing to note about her Limit Burst and Ouroboros, which we'll go ahead and get to using in a minute, but these abilities, because they use your imbued weapon, uh, they're, they're typed as a physical attack that uses magic scaling. So what this means is that if you have physical killers equipped, they will also activate in addition to any killers plus. So a really good example of this is uh, this Cerse who has Diabolos. Um, Diabolos normally grants Demon Killer and Demon Killer Plus, and when she's casting her magic, Demon Killer Plus is the only one that applies because Demon Killer works for physical attacks only. Demon Killer Plus works for all kinds of attacks. Now when she uses her Limit Burst or Ouroboros, it will use both of these because it counts as a physical attack. So that's definitely something worth keeping in mind. So. Uh, an example might be choosing to use Phoenix or Odin based on, you know, the undead killer that you need for a given fight. If it's more important to have it on her limit burst, you may want to, you know, use one or the other. Just as an example. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Her limit burst and her Ouroboros are physical attacks that scale off of magic. And that also means that bosses that are immune to magic can be damaged by that ability, and it means that bosses that are immune to physical damage cannot be damaged by that ability. So just something important to keep in mind. So now that we've used the Limit Burst, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of unlocked skills, and they all float to the top here. Sorry, I keep trying to like highlight it with my, my little finger cursor without swiping it, but these top four here are your new unlocked skills, or top five, sorry. It also includes uh, Dust Devil. And you'll see we have all seeing eyes. So now we have quadcast unlocked and we have all these other abilities. And now these are all AoE and they all have different chaining families. So we'll go ahead and just sample a few of them so we can kind of get an idea of what they all look like. Yeah, they all look pretty freaking cool. And then there's the wind one. That's pretty standard looking. I think that's like Pile Driver's animation, actually. It's pretty much copied. So, uh, the important thing to know about all of these abilities is that they have different chaining families. Now, if you're using a pair of Circes to chain with, it's not going to matter. Um, and side note, I know Circe is probably not how you pronounce this, so I'm testing you right here, right now. If you go to the comments and try to correct how I'm saying it, I'll know that you didn't watch the whole video, because you didn't watch this far. But, uh, you know, I, it got stuck in my head that it's pronounced Circe, and then I've heard many different things, and then the creator said it was another way, and I just can't escape it now, so I just embrace that I call her Circe. Anyways, back on the ranch. Her different abilities have different chaining frames, so when you're using two sources to chain together, it doesn't really matter which ones you use as long as you use the same ones, but she does have a lot of non-duplicate chaining partner options available to her. Now the first of which is with Blazing Omen and Flash Freeze. Uh, these are both absolute zero chaining frames. So they chain with Medina, and they chain with Christine. Uh, but it is worth noting that the only the only element that other people have right now is currently ice. Uh, there are, are no other characters with a fire attack that has absolute zero frames. So if you're using uh, Heat Wave, you're probably going to want to use a Source Friend. If you're using Flash Freeze, you could chain up with Christine or Medina right now. Now, another one of the chaining frames that she has is with her Earth Attacks. Um, this is Predict Sandstorm, and this is part of the Chaos Wave family. Right now in Global, we don't have any... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like that animation a lot. 
Uh, right now in Global, we don't have any Chaos Wave Chainers that do Earth Element, but we do get several in the future, not the least of which is CG Dark Fina. So, while it may not be the most useful for non-duplicate chaining right now, it is really nice to have in the back pocket uh, for when we have future mages that do have Earth damage. Now the last and most important family that she has to chain with is Bolting Strike, and she has that with her water and her wind frames. Uh, and, and this is really, really handy because, you know, Bolting Strike is growing every single day. Let's see those again. Now, you may be wondering, well, I know that, uh, I know that... Esther has Bolting Strike frames, I know that Xeno has Bolting Strike frames, but neither of them really favor wind or water. Who the heck could I even chain this with if I'm not using two Surs? Well, the newly updated Malfazy has two abilities that are wind element, Bolting Strike frames, and then you also have Randy as an option for water bolting strike frames. So those are basically your two big options right this second. I'm sure other units will get it down the line. Uh, m for the most part, you're gonna want to be using a pair of sources anyways because you can use her quad cast every single turn. And, and it's really nice because there's so many options. Let me let me just kind of queue up some abilities and get to the get to the next stuff. So now my sources have all kinds of elements equipped. This is kind of funny. But they have them all apparel imperiled thanks to their limit burst. Now, I glossed over Ouroboros and it's time to revisit it. Ouroboros is a very powerful finishing ability that also grants quad cast and, and her upgraded skills. So this is something that you can weave in and it takes on whatever element you have imbued on yourself. So if we used one of her fire attacks last turn, it's going to do fire element damage. If we used one of her earth attacks, then it's going to do earth damage. And the nice thing is you are able to use it as a finishing skill on top of some of these abilities. Now I haven't tested them all myself, but I do know um, from what I've heard that you can do it on top of her earth chaining ability. So we're going to go ahead and show what that looks like. We'll just do two. You can go ahead and chain that up and a Roboros will land on the end. And it does a crazy amount of damage. It broke the last two hits of the chain, but the Ouroboros itself managed to land. And uh, it hits very, very hard. And it also applies a bleed to the target, which hits very hard as well. So that's something if you need a little bit of burst damage, Surse has got you covered there. Now the thing about Surse that I think is both nice, but also sometimes limiting, is that she doesn't have very high burst damage for the most part, because once you get her quad cast unlocked, she basically just goes crazy every single turn with four casts of whatever, which does great damage, but it's not like other damage dealers where they have ramping up damage and you can burst down a boss. So it just means you may not be able to one-shot a boss as easily with Surse uh, in the early turns of the fight, but you will be able to do really solid sustained damage. Now one other thing that's really handy to keep in mind is that Surse can multicast everything, which means if your limit burst is not quite up, which it should be, most of the time because a lot of her abilities fill her own limit burst, but if you don't have it, you can use Condemn and then continue your chaining abilities, and what that will do is manually give you quad cast and your, your, your better abilities. I think I used the wrong one on this Earth, but it unlocks them so that you can keep using quad cast. So that's one of the things that ultimately makes Surse very, very powerful is that she does have perfect uptime on quad cast. You just have to use one fourth of an action every three turns or something like that at a minimum. But of course you can use her limit burst or you can use um, you can use Ouroboros to unlock uh, unlock it that way. And of course you'll be using the limit burst as part of her rotation to apply the imperils. So that's that's basically Surs and how to use her as a damage dealer in a nutshell. That was an insane amount of unchained damage. That was like half a billion damage. Excuse me? Sir, are you okay? Like who <laughs> I just I'm just constantly wowed. It's it's great to finally have a really solid mage. And many of the mages coming down the line in global are gonna be very similar to how Surce is now, where they're gonna have unlockable quad cast a lot of times through their limit burst or through other things like that, and they're just gonna do really great sustained damage, but not quite as much burst damage as our physical damage dealers. That's just really awesome damage.
yeah, close to a billion. And like some of these are like half naked, naked or whatever. So anyways, um, I did say we were only going to touch briefly on builds because they are pretty simple with Surs because she is just a mage after all. So I'm going to give you a few examples of things that you can do and then a couple of things to keep in mind in the future. Now on to some gearing recommendations for Cerse. Um I think for most people out of the gate she's going to err towards being a true double hand mage and that's simply because in her upgraded kit she does have a 100% true double hand for magic when she has a single weapon equipped. And so if we're going to look at the whale end of this build you're definitely going to see <laughs> some pretty outrageous builds. Uh, Sybil Crescent, her own STMR, as well as Carlette's STMR, Sakura's STMR, two of Rem's STMR, I think it's Grimlord Sakura's STMR, as well as um, Carlette's TMR, and Shantoto's STMR. So it is STMR basically through and through for a Super Omega Whale build, and that'll bring her up to 2900 magic, which is really, really insane, and even better than that, it brings her up to over 800 spirit. So this is kind of, you know, the upper echelon build. I, I think most people, you know, I just include this for com kind of comparison purposes. Um, but most people are not going to have access to this. What most people are going to be able to do is something more similar to this build. And this build only does maybe, I would estimate, like, not even 25% less damage than the other one. Um, it, do it still does very comparable damage, and it's full of stuff that's much easier to get. So, for example, we're using the Stardust Rod, which you can get from Orthos and Typhon, uh, the new Scorn of the Octopus Teacher trial. Quite easy to get, gives you some really strong magic stats, uh, something that I highly recommend if you don't have it already. Additionally, we are using Shiva's Tiara for the 51 magic and the Lordly Robes for another 65 magic. Now, Shiva's Tiara is from Dark Shiva and Golem Trial, which is not too difficult, especially if you have Cerse, uh, with Cerse, as you saw in yesterday's Tour of Destruction. If she's sufficiently strong and you have three of them, you can <laughs> just one-shot the trial. And the Lordly Robes are, of course, the parameter reward, I believe, for Spirit. So it is a little bit trickier to get, but it is something that you can acquire. Now, on this build, we're also using two of Cerse's own TMR. So if you're running a seven-star Cerse, you do have the option of getting both of these. And I highly recommend you get two of them because it's an easy way to get a lot of magic and a lot of magic percent as well as some MP. Because um, you'll see with this build, she has almost 900 MP, which, you know, she's going to need if she's quad casting stuff every turn. Now, in this build, we've also included Carlette's TMR as well as High Seraph Ultima's TMR. These are going to help with her double hand magic and her uh, magic percentage, respectively. If you don't have these, not a big deal. You can replace it with stuff like Rod Mastery or other magic materials. Magical Potential is Magnus TMR, so that's a 4 star based TMR, very easy to acquire. And then Unmatched Wizardry is the one that most people may or may not have. This is from um, Kaliva, who is a limited time event unit who came and went a long minute ago. So if you, of course, if you don't have Unmatched Wizardry, you can replace it with basically anything else. But as you can see with this build, you hit only like 250-ish less magic, and your damage only goes down by like 20-ish percent if my head math on the fly is to be trusted at all, which it probably isn't, but you know, <laughs> I tried. Now this, this is definitely a build that is more achievable for a lot of players, and she still really packs a punch with close to 2700 magic. So if anybody saw my Tour of Destruction was like, holy crap, Mars King Gear 3 Circes. Well the secret is, Circes TMR is overpowered as heck, and uh, gearing her as a mage damage dealer is not actually too difficult. And that's one of the things I really, really like about her, her is that she is extremely accessible. So. If anybody is wondering, you know, we can talk about how worth it Cerse is. I think if, she's 100% worth it. She's better than any mage that we've ever had, and she's going to hold her own against a lot of future mages as it is. And even when she starts to fall out of favor, she's still going to be a viable chain partner for some of those mages that come down the line. So that's something to be super excited about. One thing that I'm really excited about with this is that it looks like they're probably, they, meaning Gumi, is probably going to take mages down a slightly different trajectory than they did in the Japanese version of the game. Because as you can see with Cerse, we have four different chaining families that we can choose from, but most of the mages in the Japanese version of the game all use Chaos Wave chaining families, which is kind of a bummer because, you know, you're either in the family or you're not, and it doesn't make it very interesting. But with Cerse, they've kind of cracked that wide open and it's like, alright, now we have kind of an option that we can take our mages down, 
So, so future mages that have wind damage, maybe they'll have a bolting strike ability that's similar to Circe's. And future earth mages, maybe they'll have chaos wave frames to match Circe's. Or, or future ice chainers will continue to have absolute zero. The opportunities are kind of endless, and I'm optimistic that that's the direction that future mages will go down with Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. So with that, I think if you have Circe, she's absolutely worth the investment. She can tackle a ton of trials with her elemental flexibility, and and her TMR and her STMR are 100% worth the investment. Like, she's just an amazing, amazing unit. I've had a lot of fun using her. I have three of her at level 120, because uh, she's 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 definitely a really good contender right now. So with that being said, we bring our complete guide for Circe to a close. Let me know down in the comments below what your experience has been with Circe, and I'll see everybody in the next one.